What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. It's been a few weeks since we did a full garden tour of all 10 plots, so today it's time to do that. So here we go quick through all 10 plots, and I got a little surprise in the kitchen for you guys at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. So let's start off here in our smallest plot. We've got our Christmas lima beans on our arch panel trellis. It's filling in nicely, no blooms yet. But hopefully start to see some blooms on there soon two rows of okra right here and we got our jing orange in this first row got a couple there that need to be picked this stuff right here is probably the best tasting raw okra i've ever had none of it's made it to some hot grease yet i've just been eating it all raw out here probably will fry some once we get enough you know making to have a good mess right here i'm getting blooms no harvestable okra and I can't remember I got emerald green velvet and Perkins long pot and I got them split in half and I usually do this in alphabetical order but I'm not sure which variety is which maybe when we get some pods we'll be able to tell and then on the back side of this plot in that last video we direct seeded some heirloom okra that a viewer sent us we called it Ruiz okra so that's right there hasn't came up yet should in a couple days on our nightshade plot here we got lots going on and this plot probably deserves its own video here pretty soon our determinate tomatoes are looking good putting on a bunch of fruit see right there nice fruit on those our indeterminates are hanging in there although we got some heat coming this next week that may take a toll on these guys as abe lincoln seem to finally turn the corner although they are still the smallest indeterminates I have. We can see some little heirloom tomatoes right there forming. Hopefully these have time enough to make before the heat gets them. Cherry tomatoes are loaded up. I got several that I need to harvest right down there. Those sweetheart tomatoes, those things doing really well. The mountain vineyard grape tomatoes, still no ripe tomatoes on those. Still not super impressed. Uh, with the production on those maybe they'll turn the corner and then all of our boy series here lemon boy purple boy and better boy they're loaded up i think these are the lemon boys there there's a cluster of about six tomatoes right there so can't wait for these guys to turn ripe i got one plant here that looks like it's gonna maybe die soon or it just doesn't look good compared to all the others it's got one little tomato on it that's ripe but uh not looking good for this guy tomatillos are rocking along got those semi florida weaved they're so just everywhere they've just been kind of having to wrap around the entire row as opposed to weaving but they're loaded up as you can see there and uh hopefully we'll be harvesting some of those guys soon here's the uh pepper topping pepper trial i'm doing so we got two cowhorn peppers here I didn't top this guy and I did top this guy. No conclusive results yet, but we can see some nice cow horn peppers forming on those plants there. And I'll show you a few more of these peppers we got. Check out this guy right here. This is called Big Jim Pepper. That thing is huge. It's a good nine, almost 10 inches long. I'm gonna wait till those turn red, but those are looking really nice. These right here are one of my favorite hotter peppers. I like them better than the jalapenos. It's called Santa Fe Grand. See if we can see they're loaded up in there and those have a nice flavor to them. We like to let those turn a little bit. We can see one down here that's starting to turn. So I like to let those guys get kind of orange and red and they're packed full of flavor. Our pepperoncinis are loaded up here. So it won't be long before we harvest some of those guys. I wanna try pickling some of those, but I've had a hard time in the past keeping them nice and crispy. If anybody's got any tips on that, let me know. And then down here on the other end with our bell peppers, we got several nice ones there. You see that guy that are ready to pick. Those are big enough to be stuffed. So that's gonna be a good treat to have here when we pick those in a day or so. Over here on the other side of the barn, we got our sweet corn here, our Yellowstone sweet corn was tasseled at about five foot tall. And sometimes when corn tassels shorter, that means it wasn't fed, given the right nutrients or water during its growth. But I think this is just a variety that doesn't get as tall because it's looked good since it sprouted. And we're starting to get some silks right there. We can see those 
that stalk's got two of them on it. I usually get just one good ear per stalk, sometimes two with most of the varieties we grow. But we got good tassels there, good timing on everything, silk showing as the pollen's starting to fall. We should get some real good pollination in here, especially with all this wind we've been having. Been having to keep the water of this stuff running the water probably, I'd say, every other day or so for quite a few hours just keeping this stuff nice and happy we don't ever want to see those leaves curl on that corn we want to keep it nice nice and watered while it's in this uh, maturing phase so to say over here in my biggest plot we planted that row of peanuts on the last video still have this empty space right here don't really know what i'm going to put in there not really ready to start warm season cover cropping yet may plant another row of peanuts if those come up good here we've got our butter peas which look pretty good considering we didn't get that great a germination on these guys looks like we're about to start getting some blooms right there so should start seeing some production on those guys pretty soon our pink eye peas look really really good they look nice and thick because we planted them on double rows and they should start kind of sprawling out to this middle here pretty soon i did spray these was something I'm not really proud of. We'll talk about that on another video, but no serious pest pressure so far. Nice looking two double rows of peas there. Squash is hanging in there. Not a whole lot of sign of disease or pest on these quite yet, although that could happen next week with all this heat we got coming. Been picking these guys about every other day. Picked them yesterday and look at there. Need to be picked again today. So really good production on those guys. Really like that Delta variety there that I tried this year for the first time. Cucumbers are looking good and having to kind of train them up the netting to keep them off the ground. Just picked these yesterday too. And look at there. Nice little slicer that's ready to be got. As far as the varieties go that I planted here, this Bristol slicer like it pretty good seems to be pretty disease resistant i don't know if it's quite as productive as something like olympian or stonewall it's a pretty good slicer variety uh, gynoecious variety this expedition pickler here is pretty good it's producing really well i don't know if it's quite as productive as something like max pack but it's a pretty good variety i do got some disease coming along down here and i can't really tell if this is that gherkin variety or part of those bristol cucumbers but you can see that kind of modeling on those leaves there that's not a good sign sometimes they'll grow out of it sometimes they're toast but we got more planted so we'll be okay and like i said these gherkins down here which i know what, that's what these are right here uh just not been super impressed with those guys they, they make a few cucumbers and they're pretty tasty but uh not maximal production by any means and over here in the dream garden we'll start right here we got our english peas and we're going to get these out of here probably in the next day or two on the next video we're going to just come in harvest what we can i got some there that are filled out nicely that one there on the ground close to the ground i know is but some of them haven't filled out all the way but we're just going to pick them all shell them we'll get what we can get it's weird with this row here it's like it started dying at the front and it's just like been a plague that's just been slowly progressing down the end of this row every day i come out here a few more feet of this row have just took a hit and i guess some of these i should have picked before they took such a hit that row over there on the other side of that kale doesn't look too bad probably get a little better harvest off that row and that kale there just keeps doing its thing needs to be picked again but we're going to get all this cleaned out of here once we pick those peas and uh, our sweet potatoes should be coming in in the next week or so so we'll need to get that ready get this plot ready to put those in the ground our tater plot still hanging in there looks well, kind of rough because some of these have started to die back but not completely and we haven't had hardly any rain so i've just been kind of letting them die all the way back i have been giving a little splash with that overhead sprinkler there every few days just to kind of keep them happy but I, I figured these red norlands here would be ready to dig by now and some of them are dying back but not a complete die back by any means so we're still going to wait maybe another few weeks if we have to on those guys the vikings still hanging in there now these irish cobblers here 
they are pretty much toast. So we're probably going to get these guys in the next few days. Go ahead and grab this row. Kennebecs are still looking really, really good. Yukons are still looking good. We probably did harvest those French fingerlings a little early, but it was nice to have some potatoes to eat early in the season. And then the German butterballs, they're still kicking. They're kind of laid over because they got so big, but still kicking along and those are probably the last ones we dig not a whole lot going on in this plot this is the one we planted the last video our popcorn more squash and cucumbers just been keeping the ground moist here nothing has germinated yet but we should start to see something pop up in the next few days i would imagine and then there's this guy and this plot's crazy this is our no-till experimental plot we have four different varieties of winter squash slash pumpkins and i remember when i did a video on this plot i don't know it's probably been over a month who we were like why you got the row space so far apart well this is why because this was eventually going to happen and now it's just covered up everything these things right here these kabocha squash i don't know if you can tell this video but these things are almost five foot tall and these leaves are absolutely massive there's my hand you can see just how big they are they're huge and we're starting to get some good fruits on those guys let's look in here see there's one right there starting to develop some color on those and these kabocha squash are really really good to eat they don't store quite as well something like a butternut but they're really tasty this is our green striped kushaw and we're starting to get some with some nice size on them there most time they have a longer neck on them. That one's just kind of short and stubby, but uh, starting to see some nice color and a good many fruits in there. The kind of least impressive variety in this plot would be this gold butternut here. We're getting some fruits on it. You can see right there, they do have a pretty color to them, but uh, just been kind of slow to get going. I don't know what the deal is with that variety. And then we got our giant pumpkins right here and we probably need to do some fruit management in here pretty soon and kind of let the plant focus its energy towards the bigger ones cut off the smaller ones i've already got some in here look at there that one there is big as a basketball already so we'll probably take these bigger ones save those and kind of cut off some of these other fruits in hopes that the plant will devote its energy to those big ones probably try to leave just uh one or two big ones per plant if you got any suggestions on that the giant pumpkins please let me know and then over here we got our melon plot watermelons are finally looking real good i finally kind of conquered that crabgrass issue in there somewhat it's looking a lot cleaner a lot better these things are sprawling nicely this row right here was planted several weeks before this row here but oh uh, I don't know if we can see any they're probably closed up by now there's one so starting to get some flowers on these guys and the bees were buzzing around here this morning so that's a good sign might start seeing some melons soon we direct seeded these two rows uh, a few videos ago got a row of canary melons here and a row of uh, called orange crunch or something like that right here and i got really good germination on all of these almost 100 percent germination along that row there and what's weird is i usually always transplant any kind of melon but uh i seem to get better germination direct seeding them waiting it gets hot and direct seeding them as opposed to growing them in trays so that may be something to note in the future just wait for that soil to warm up and direct seed those puppies if your weed pressure is not too bad seems like it's going to work pretty well and this last plot here this is my pride and joy this has been my favorite plot although there's not a whole lot to eat in here so we got our herbs right here this tarragon man really been loving having all this fresh tarragon brooklyn makes a chicken salad with cream cheese and tarragon so no mayo and it's a little thicker but it's really really good there was a place in athens that used to make it like that and we started doing it it's really good thyme sage garlic chives down there on the end basil here is just looking amazing really enjoying having that keeping the blooms picked off of that look at that thai basil isn't that just beautiful i need to go in there and 
pick the blooms off that as well but man it's just pretty way more than we'll ever eat but i've just enjoyed walking out here looking at it and smelling it and then this deal man it is really really fragrant i was cutting the grass earlier and just riding by here on the lawnmower winds blowing the right way and just caught a good waft of deal there love how this stuff smells borage i haven't really done anything with the borage i know it has lots of uses look at there bees are working it right now see that guy so i haven't really done anything with the borage i've just been coming out here and watching the bees feed on it that's enough for me maybe we'll figure out something to do with it it is kind of spiky i don't really want to eat it but uh love the blooms there and we've been cutting some of the blooms and putting them in our flower bouquets they make a nice little addition to that as well over here with our other flowers man things are popping as well and i'm i'm glad i gave everything a little more space in here i know it i could have fit more rows in here but it's just been nice to walk out here with the family don't have to worry about trampling anything come out here cut flowers cut herbs it's just nice to have a little extra room there marigolds looking wonderful love how those guys smell down here the celosia this stuff is beautiful all different colors purple red orange and then our ageratum here last time i showed you this i just cut it and it wasn't blooming but see it makes those tiny blooms there and those little tiny native bees love this stuff i need to cut it back one more time get it a little more bushier but really, really happy with that stuff. And that stuff will take the heat all summer in addition to the celosia right here. Nasturtiums are still kicking good. I need to deadhead some of these guys so they'll keep growing. I made a mistake on several of the previous garden tours and I called this impatience and everybody was like, I oh, don't look like impatience. This is actually balsam, but the variety is called impatience balsamina. So it's a impatience type balsam and uh, it's doing really good. The blooms are still kind of weird. They just form along the bottom there, not the top, but the bees seem to really like this stuff. Zinnias are popping. We got our white zinnias. We got some lime zinnias there. And then we got our colorful mix over here. We've kind of been keeping these trimmed, still trying to make those get more bushy instead of taller because uh, we get some good wind in here. And if the soil was to be wet, it can blow them over. Over here, our Cosmos. Uh, this stuff, I did trim it back because it was getting a little leggy. It looks really nice now. Starting to get a few more blooms. Uh, wanting to develop right there. This Cosmos here, the orange and yellow. Man, this stuff looks awesome. I really, really like this variety here. I like it better than that type there. I can't remember the names of them, but it's two different types of Cosmos definitely like this one better and then our lacy facilia it has finally started to do something and look at those blooms right there kind of looks like the adjuratum a little bit but different and the bees really like this stuff as well saw a bunch of those little native bees on this this morning it's getting some nice foliage on it so i hope you enjoyed that garden walk around there if you can't tell by looking at our soils throughout that walk around it is really really dry here i know a lot of our friends to the west have had 30 inches of rain in the last month but those storms they just tend to kind of fizzle out by the time they get over here so we haven't had any rain in probably about a week and a half and i'm not seeing any in the next week as well we are supposed to get up to the high 90s next week thank goodness i've got drip irrigation on everything except okra and potatoes so i've been able to keep everything nice and happy so far now i've been out here moving the water hose watering just about every day you know it takes a little bit of time to water 10 different plots and i'm only coming off two spigots doing that so moving the water hoses around a lot but I've been able to keep everything pretty happy. I'm a little bit worried about some of those tomato varieties that don't care for those high 90 temperatures. We'll just have to see what happens there. All right, so now as promised, let's go inside to the kitchen and let's make something we've never made or even eaten before. But I think we may like it. All right, guys, if you've been following along with the videos, you know we grew some Napa cabbage this spring and i harvested this about a week ago but it keeps pretty well in the fridge in these bags and i've always wanted to try making some kimchi 
I've never even eaten kimchi. I don't even know if I like it, but everybody says I should make it with this Napa cabbage and that's kind of why I grew some was to try it. So we're about to give it a try. I'm sure I'm going to make plenty of mistakes and you can let me know um, all the different um, mistakes I make and what I should have done different and all that good stuff for you out there that are professionals making kimchi. I did notice online there are lots of different ways to make this stuff, but I had a subscriber or viewer send me a recipe that seems pretty easy so we're going to go with that so as far as the ingredients go for this recipe i've got it calls for three kilograms of cabbage which is six and a half almost seven pounds or so i've got two bags here these are pretty heavy maybe they have a little more than six or seven pounds there but that should be enough we've got this korean chili pepper flake uh, called gojigaru or something like that now I couldn't find any of that. I did find some of this and a buddy of mine said you could just use that. But I also found this and someone else told me you could use this chili paste. I think we're going to go with this stuff right here. We'll see if it works or not. Then we've got some minced garlic. Now I just harvested some garlic, elephant garlic from my garden but it's not really cured yet. Not really ready um, to eat so I just bought some minced garlic. We're going to have to have some ginger. So I bought some ginger. I do have somebody sending me some ginger so I can start growing my own. But I gotta mince this ginger up. Then we gotta have some sugar, fish sauce. It says two onions, but that's a pretty good sized onion I grew there. So we're just gonna go with that one. And then an apple, and I had to buy some green onions. Didn't have any green onions in the garden. So that's all the ingredients we're gonna use today. Uh, might have missed the salt. Yeah, we got the pickling salt here. We're going to use that as well. Okay, so the first thing it says to do is we need to quarter up this cabbage and remove this root part here. And all the videos I've seen online doing this, you do kind of a rough cut. This is not like coleslaw where you shred it up. So I'm going to go ahead and take the root part off of there. And then we're just going to quarter it up here. And those are still pretty big pieces. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it one more time or two more times, about like that there. All right, so we got our cabbage rough cut here and I'm gonna have to use several bowls. I don't have a bowl big enough for all this. Now for the fermenting part, I think I'm gonna use my big uh, ceramic crock I've got. But for this, I'm just gonna have to use multiple bowls. I've got a cup of uh, pickling salt right here and it says we just need to kind of layer this and sprinkle the salt on each layer so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to kind of put a layer in here and then sprinkle a little salt so it's kind of mix it around put a little more salt on there another layer a little more salt we need to leave room. I don't want to fill it up too much because it says we got to come in here and kind of mix it around every, you know, 30 minutes or so while this sits for two hours. So I'm not going to top them off real big. All right, so everything is salted and mixed pretty well there. And so now we just let this sit for two hours and come in here every now and then and just kind of mix it up a little bit. I didn't use a whole cup of salt. Maybe I realize that's a mistake, but it seemed like I got enough salt on here. And we're going to wash this salt off anyways before we mix the paste and everything together. Okay, so now we need to make our paste. Now, this recipe calls for a cup of those chili flakes, but I'm going with this liquid stuff right here. Whew, that stuff smells pretty potent. We're going to just see how hot this is, I guess. Brooklyn doesn't really like spicy stuff, and I'm kind of a glutton for punishment, so we'll try it. So we got our chili stuff in there now we need uh, five tablespoons of garlic one two five real exact measurements there then we need uh minced ginger two tablespoons of that so get that in there already cut that up we need our sugar four tablespoons of sugar and this fish sauce here and i don't think i've ever used fish sauce on anything a half a cup of that and then we'll mix this up here 
Now to this, we need to add two onions and one apple. So let me cut up an onion and an apple. We'll blend them and then we're supposed to add them in there. All right, so let's throw our onion and apple in the Ninja here. Now of all the videos I watched, I didn't see anybody else using apple and onion and blending it up, but that's what this recipe calls for. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, that looks to be blended well enough. Let's get that added in here to our paste. Now a lot of recipes I saw called for putting carrots and radishes in there, but uh, this one didn't say nothing about that. So we're not adding any of those. I didn't have any of those in the garden anyway. I would have had to go buy some carrots and radishes. There we go, that's our paste right there that we're gonna coat our cabbage with once it's done doing its thing with the salt. Now I do kind of want to try this. Got a little heat to it, not a whole lot. Pretty good though. All right, so our cabbage has been sitting here for a couple hours with the salt rubbed around it and it's actually condensed down a good bit. So I've been able to go to fewer bowls. I started out with three or four bowls. Now we're just down to two here. You can see it's kind of wilted down some. So after waiting the two hours and we mixed it about every 30 minutes or so, now we got to drain this stuff. The recipe says to rinse it really good three or four times or else it'll be too salty. So we need to rinse this off there and we're just going to put it here in a colander with some cold water. So I'm going to rinse off the cabbage and I'll put it in here when I'm done. I was going to use my fermenting crop, but now that it's shrunk down a good bit, I think I can just use this. And the things I saw online, they just put saran wrap over it and cover it, let it ferment in a bowl or whatever. So I think we're going to save our fermenting crop for pickles. We'll do our kimchi in here. So we'll rinse it, put it in here, then we'll add all the good stuff. Okay, cabbage is rinsed, and I think I can eventually all fit this in this bowl, but for mixing purposes, I'm going to keep it separate, and then we'll combine it all. I tried this stuff, and um, pretty good. Not too salty. You got a little bit of salt there, but about what you would expect with something like sauerkraut. Now, the recipe I got says you can't ever have too many green onions, so I cut up two big bunches of them, and we're just going to kind of split those amongst these two bowls right here. And we got our paste here which has been chilling in the fridge. And I got to thinking about this after I made it compared to what I saw online. I think the apples are probably a good idea if you don't want it super, super spicy. It kind of cuts some of that heat a little bit. And I think Brooklyn may actually like this because it's not going to be too hot. So we're just going to kind of try to split this up here. Going to mash it all together. Get everything nice and coated there. And I think we can combine this into here. Let's try it. Dang, that's pretty good. A little bit of heat, but not a whole lot. Let me zoom in here so you can see all the goodness. Now, the ones I saw online had a lot more red color to them than this, and it's probably because they used that powder instead of the paste. But this here tastes pretty good so far, so we're just going to let it ride like it is. And the folks online I saw doing this just take saran wrap here and they kind of pressed it down in there on it like that for the fermentation process so that's what we're going to do we're going to give that a try just like that right there and just put this in a dark place might put a lid on top of this put it in a dark place in my recipe says uh It'll be good and fermented after three to four days, but will store for at least two months. So once it's good and fermented, we'll probably just put it in the fridge. I did read if you put it in the fridge, it takes a little longer for it to develop the kind of good sour fermented flavor. So we're going to leave it out, just put it in a dark place. And then after a few days, we'll probably put it in the fridge and we'll be sure to give this a try on one of the upcoming videos. All right, all right, all right. So I hope you enjoyed following along with my rookie kimchi experience here and definitely let me know if i made any crucial mistakes there and if you've got any adaptations things you'd like to add 
certainly let me know if you've ever tried making it with that kind of paste as opposed to the powder let me know what I can expect there as well. Also, if you got any advice on those giant pumpkins, what I should do there, how many I should leave per plant, any tips on that would be greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. By the beauty of your life